Okay, so picking up right where we left off, we were here in this bounding volume tab and just about to cover the normal. So let's turn this off and go to the normal tab and turn it on. And now you can see that we're deleting everything. And that's because this value here, our spread angle, is so incredibly high. So as we dial this back, we can start to get a better idea of what's going on. So we're also given this direction parameter. And right now it's set to 0, 0, 1, or that is to say the positive z-axis. We're also given this spread angle. So with this current operation, we're taking our direction, again, the positive z-axis, and we're deleting all of the primitives with a normal pointing in that direction. But since it's so rare to have a primitive that's pointing exactly along a specific axis, we're also given the spread angle. And this is the number of degrees that our normal values are able to vary from our, in, from our specified direction. And so right now, we're deleting all of the primitives within 25 degrees of a vector value of 0, 0, 1. So everything within 25 degrees of the z-axis. And so as we increase this value, we're allowing more and more primitives into our selection since they're able to vary by larger and larger numbers. And we're deleting the front half of Tommy. And so that's what's going on there. Now you're also given this back face from parameter down here, and this allows you to input a camera and delete everything facing away from it. So let's give an example of that. Come up here into the top right and give ourselves a new camera. That'll do fine. So let's jump back into our geometry, and now we can link them up. Hit this right here, and then select our newly created camera. And now it looks like we're not actually deleting anything. But if we come to Tommy and we rotate him around, you can see that we're actually deleting every primitive facing away from our camera. And so this basically just gives you camera culling for free. Really good at cleaning up some of a, some high density geometry where you might need to optimize your viewport for something. So a great option to be aware of. All right, and lastly, we have the degenerate tab. And we can turn this on. And the first option that we have is to delete degenerate primitives. And this, like it says, deletes primitives that Houdini considers to be degenerate. Now, that classification is based on area size, which is to say how large a primitive is. So if we turn this on, you can see that some primitives, even though they're not technically degenerate, they're supposed to be there, are considered degenerate just because they're so small. But if you're deleting some primitives that you don't want to delete, you can come down here to this tolerance parameter and play around with the value. So as it gets lower, you can see that the area size that a primitive needs to have in order for it to be considered degenerate gets lower and lower and lower. So it allows smaller and smaller primitives to exist. And conversely, as you increase it, it deletes more and more and more of them. So that's what's going on there. Now underneath that, you're also given this delete zero area faces option. And this takes faces that might have been compressed down to a zero, zero, zero dimension, which is to say they don't actually occupy any space, and it just cleans them up for you. Now, Tommy's pretty well modeled, so none of these actually exist. So the best example I can give of this is if we give ourselves a circle. So let's drop down a circle, visualize this, and change the type to polygon, change the divisions to four, and change the archetype to open. So now we have a four-sided open face polygon. And now if we scale the radius down to zero, it is also a zero area polygon. So if we turn on the points, you can see that the circle is still there. You can also see that we still have five points in our geometry. So now if we drop down another delete node and plug in our circle, come on over to the degenerate tab and delete zero area faces, you can see that nothing will happen. And that's because, as we said in our parameters, our circle is an open face polygon. So to fix this, all we have to do is check on treat open faces as closed. And now, since our circle has zero area and is now being treated as a closed polygon, it is being deleted by the delete node. This has been the Delete Sop. Thank you for watching.